so the next panel is called Beyond the Comfort Zone, which I think really suited us because everybody is a bit nervous about this. <laughs> so, like, yeah, we are not sure, but yeah, let's do it. Uh, we're talking about transdisciplinary, about the aesthetics of doing multidisciplinary work and about cross-sector uh, cooperation, about uh, the collaboration between institution and independent sector. Uh, we have about uh, 45 minutes, an hour to talk about it. Uh, and I'm just going to briefly introduce who are we here. So you met me before. I was Circus Strada uh, board member before. So now I'm um, also that, but also part of the Peculiar Families Festival uh, team, small team and 100 uh, collective. We have Nemanja Jovanovic from Serbia here, a contemporary circus uh, artist. Yes, uh, Petra Naiman, our uh, new rising star of contemporary circus <laughs> in Croatia. Uh, both are educated in France uh, and still are. Uh, Valentina Corteze, also from France, uh, also contemporary circus and dance and a lot of different things. Uh, Mirna from uh, Zagreb Dance Week, uh, also different kind of roles. And Chloe now as a presenter and co-founder of CM. So we can start with Chloe. Uh, we have a very interesting organization in Provence, uh, which is uh, working with different sectors, with different audiences, with different stakeholders. But so can you just give us like a small presentation of, of our organization? Yeah, um, thank you. Um, yes, I changed the, the hat. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I built a uh, venue in Aix-en-Provence in the south of France, Sophie Marseille, the school, the International Center for Arts in Motion. It's a place where um, we have four main axes of development. We teach circus, uh, we do innovation, innovation and research. Um, we, we help uh, companies on their strategic issues. And uh, we host and uh, spread shows on the territory. Uh, the four axes on which we are working. But uh, what um, brings us together in that project is um, we try to to make path uh, uh, cross. Like in this in the society now we have we, we are in small bubbles. And we uh, today are kind of a bubble because we are more or less uh, similar, uh, and um, and we share common issues and we share common uh, thoughts. But uh, the society is made of a lot of bubbles, and in the Siam we try to make them uh, cross. Uh, so we try to bring in the same place different people that would not meet otherwise, and that's what. Uh, um, uh, leads us all the time to uh, try to reach new audiences and uh, make them feel at home, even if they are really different and they wouldn't pass by uh, in the same, uh, well, in another place of the society. One, one uh, anecdote, for example, is a uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a in uh, it's it's a four hectare place with uh, five uh, tents, and in one of the big tents, we had a, a class for um, prisoners that were at the end. Uh, they, they were still uh, in prison in day, but they had they are at the end of their their stay, and uh, so they could go out for a couple of hours. And we, we did classes with them. They were in the in the tent, and on the other side of that same tent, we had teachers um, that were they were ma mainly female, where the, the other group was mainly male, and uh, and they were uh, preparing their classes for for bringing schools uh, at the Siam for circus classes, and those kind of person they, they would never meet other way. And they, they were like, oh, they are nice guys on the other side of the, of the thing. Mm -hmm. This kind of easy way to meet somebody without the, the, the burden of having um, the, all their curriculum before meeting them, it's what we, try, we are trying to do. And we, we like a translator. And in the project that uh, are cr cross-sectorial, we try to, to push it as far as we can uh, two examples that I, I can share with you. The first one is um, 
we, we are uh, making a partnership with what is called in France uh, CNRS, is the National Research Center. It's all the researchers in France. And uh, we invited three circus artists to meet with three researchers in social sciences. They had five days uh, to do um, some, something together. To, it's like it, it was supposed to be 20 minutes, whatever, but it's each one of them had to make a, a path, uh, a, a one step toward the other, and not it was not the, the researcher that had to um, be translated by the artist on stage, or um, or the, the contrary, but they both had to understand each other and do something together. It was uh, not that easy because in those projects, it often happens that. Um, and on the first day, it's like uh, super love, <laughs> new story. <laughs> and then on the second day, you start uh, seeing that some, the other one doesn't understand you and has a lot of uh, uh, a priori on, on what you're doing. And then the third day is the fight, usually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and, and, and after that, Sometimes you go out with something interesting, sometimes it's more difficult. But anyway, the process is really interesting and it, it needs translator all the time to, to try to, uh, to smoothen the thing. To moderate, yeah. <laughs> and to, to tell each other, it's not exactly what you wanted to, to say or it's, it's not that, um, it, that it didn't want to hurt you or you should look that way or it's, it's like it's it's an, a long term it the, the 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 difficulty of the term is to to be as discreet as possible but as as a, uh, a facilitator all the time so that that was what our uh, first experience but it's still uh, public with public like public institution with public institution so we still share kind of a part of a, a common values a co common culture and then we pushed it a little forward uh, it's it, it was uh, to we, we are designing project now with private companies so we um as yam we are a, um, a non-profit organization and in france you can um, uh, get um, uh, private funding that is supported by the state and those fundings, it can be money, but it also be can co competencies. And so we um, put together artists that had needs of competencies with some companies that had those competencies. Uh, one of the, um, the most recent projects was with uh, AIO. Uh, it's a juggling company that made a, a big show and is still on, on its way. And um, Eric Longchel needed to do an aquarium and uh, you know that out of the blue there is a um, uh, that you can see tonight is a, it was another company that wanted to do acrobatics in an aquarium and in the same time the other artists wanted to do juggling in, in another aquarium and uh, but they, they both didn't have any aquarium and they were both doing uh, calculation on the size of the aquarium on, on the, uh, especially on the glass, the glass issue of touring an aquarium and building an aquarium. <coughs> and so uh, before Eric came to, to the Siam, he was, um, he was discussing about aquarium and they had really different results, like 10 times difference. So he was a little scared and he told me, I, I need to, be sure of the result and I, I, I have a friend that is an engineer and he's great on, on building things and he's perfect but it's a too too big of an issue I, I need to to be sure so we asked uh, a, a multinational company that is called Capgemini it's the a world leader on um, consulting on engineering that was a partner of, of us for uh, some years. And we said, can you give us some engineers that usually work on uh, Airbus planes or 
to work on a, something weird. So don't be scared. It's a little weird, but you see, it's really interesting. It's an aquarium where you can put somebody like a human inside the aquarium that do that bubbles to juggle. And, and we need you to build the aquarium. So, so your competencies, we know that you can make it, but the object is, is weird. And on the other side, we had to tell the, the artist to, to reassure that it, it will be, um, he will be understood and he will not go out with something that he could not afford. That was the, the main issue of that project. And so, uh, so, so there's a lot of discussions on both sides to um, distress everybody on the other one. And uh, the project almost uh, ended uh, many times because of uh, mis misunderstanding. But at, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a great victory because the aquarium now exists. And he, he was, uh, the design was changed and he has now parts that are inspired from Airbus uh, because it was easy, it was lighter, it was um, easier for the audience to see inside. And so, um, and in the same time, um, those engineers from Airbus, they, they spent uh, weeks working on how to evacuate a human inside an aquarium that could be unbuilt and transported around Europe. So for them, it's a lot of inspiration. For the artist, it was a, a good security and also uh, somebody to discuss uh, about uh, his uh, constraints. And so uh, in the end of the project, because uh, for me, it's, it's, it, we, we still did not reach the total end, uh, I, I would I would really love when the aquarium will be in Toulouse, close to the Airbus sector where the engineers are working, so we, that we can sh um, present that aquarium uh, the little show inside Airbus. That would be like the, the end of the, the, the round. And can I just ask you about the, the finances uh, behind this kind of cooperation? Are they willing to do it for free? How do you compensate the, the, the amount of time that it's put in this kind of research together with the circus artists or company? For us, it's a big issue because, uh, for example, the, the Ministry of Culture doesn't understand that kind of project. Well, it's, it's a bit difficult to tell it like this, but it's a collaboration between the private sector and the, the public sector is always seen uh, by, by the public sector as a way to get money and by the private sector as a way to be taken money. Yes. So it's, it's quite hard. That, I, I feel that that kind of project should be supported as, as a project. It's not because it involves a company that it should not be supported uh, by anything uh, of the public sector. Uh, th so those projects, we, we paid it on our own money because we believe that those seeds should grow and, and then we'll, we'll prove that it's, it's important to finance that kind of project because it's difficult, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work of translation that is not visible, but if you don't do it, then everything goes down. But, and, and for, so it's a lot of time investment from all the team in this in this year, and on the side of the company, it's it's um, it's an investment um, also helped by that system in France uh, of uh, we call it mecena. It's um, if somebody has donor. the translation donor. donor. Uh, so when a company uh, gives uh, something to. Uh, uh, non-profit organization that has some uh, special um, uh, authorization that makes sure that it's for general interest, then 60% uh, of what the company gave to, to, to the, the organization is uh, uh, taken out of, their, of the money they pay to the, to the, to the, yeah, the taxes. So, so this so, is a public funding as well? Yeah, but in a way, I would not be that 
Sure, because it's uh, in, in, you need to consider that the company it's it's only what it costs to the company. So the company gives hundred percent, yeah, and got back sixty percent, yeah. So the company, I mean, if you do the addition, then the company still gives forty percent, and the public doesn't give anything. I mean, if it, the the company gives the total thing and get back sixty percent, so if you look at the end of the addition. It's the company that gave 40% of the time of their employees to the, to the, to the public structure. So this doesn't found, doesn't found the total uh, uh, price, the total cost of its employees. And this doesn't find all the work that has to be done uh, uh, around. Yeah, but it's the, this, this is the famous private Public partnership, the PPP. Yeah. <laughs> the PPP. Yeah, that, that PPP. <laughs> uh, it's, it's more. It's more. Uh, when, when it, that's the that's the, the main issue is because we uh, usually when you do that kind of project, you're put with the PPP. That is um, when public and private just um, uh, do as they would collaborate for something general interest. For example, uh, it's a private uh, builder that makes a building and uh, uh, rent it to the public sector because he cannot afford to build. This is the usual PPP mm -hmm. where the, the private sector does a lot of money because the public sector cannot pay in one, in one, mm -hmm. one and, and has to spread it over time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, public money founding private companies for a service. This is really different. It's, it's a collaboration between public and private, but we cannot put it in PPP because uh, <laughs> the investment from the company is real. Mm -hmm. They are losing money to that project, but they are investing money to that project and the public is not investing anything. That's what we need to change as a point of view, uh, because it's really different. Thank you. And I so, think yeah, it's, no, 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 it's, it's great. And I think it's very interesting and it's bringing innovation to the contemporary circle that we all need as, as a sector. This uh, combination with the research, with the scientists, that is something that is missing at the moment. Uh, now we will switch to this side. <laughs> I will talk with uh, Nemanja, uh, who had a recent experience of working with a dance choreographer, but it's more than uh, just a dance, it's really like a combination of uh, research and performing mm -hmm. art. You were a part of European Capital of Culture program with uh, performance Ecoute expansion <laughs> uh, by Kit Dubois, and you perform in April in Novi Sad. So, can you tell us a bit more about this collaboration and what brought yeah. to you, and how how did it feel? Mm. Well, uh, in short, uh, it's more of an experience because Kit Dubois, that uh, the choreographer that I worked with, she did a lot of uh, parabolic flights uh, and a lot of research of a dancer in a parabolic flight. So she did. I'm guessing now, I'm not sure, but like 50 or 60 flights in the zero gravity uh, environment. And she uh, wanted to transfer that experience of uh, zero gravity to uh, Earth, basically. And uh, the way she saw uh, to do that was with the circus artists, also uh, with the science, uh, uh, science research, and uh, as in a way because she comes from a, a dance background, she's a she's a dancer, so um, she found a way uh, with the, in collaboration with the scientists to use. Uh, uh, like uh, captors, captors yeah. like in, I don't know in English, uh, like well, in French is like captor, but uh, sensors. Sensors. sensors, yeah, exactly. Uh, sensors that you put on your hands <laughs> and it uh, reads all of your movements uh, and also your force that you use and uh, basically everything that you do physically, it reads it and transmits, uh, like puts it as an information on, uh, on a computer that can be used in a different way. That's where she also uh, was working with uh, uh, com 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 
music uh, designer, music compositor, com composer, yeah. composer, yes, exactly, thank you. <laughs> music composer, as well as a uh, uh, light designer. Uh, so in the same time, uh, they created uh, uh, environment that's made out of sound. And us, the artists that were on the stage, uh, were moving through the sound space and we're altering the, the sound by our movement and also by uh, our force that we use. And it created a different um, sound. Uh, like there is a sound uh, melody, like one melody that's being changed. Like if you can imagine, I, I always imagined it like water. And when you go inside of the water with your hand, it uh, changes the structure of the water. Water goes like, is, is exactly like air as well. So that's only with sound. Um, and also the light that worked at the same time uh, in the projection behind us on the on the stage that moved exactly with the uh, with everything that we did with these uh, sensors. Uh, so she chose to work with circus artists uh, because it had more uh, aerial things than dancers had. So she wants to be more in the air, but like something that's in the air, not completely in the air, but not completely on the ground. So something in the build, because that's kind of like what a zero gravity experience is. Like you're in that plane and you're standing on the floor of the plane and all of a sudden you just start losing uh, your, uh, your floor and you're not going completely all the way to the, uh, on top and you're in some, somewhere in, 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 in between, in the middle of, uh, of the two. And you start losing everything that you know, all of your senses are completely different and uh, they change uh, as soon as you don't feel the gravity anymore. And that is the uh, sensation that you want to, to, to show on the ground with the sensors, with the sound, with the light, uh, and to really uh, try and give us the experience of uh, mm, zero gravity. And um, yeah, I was doing uh, floor acrobatics uh, and it's really uh, changed the way I do uh, circus, I do acrobatics, because it's before it was always about gravity. But right now, like how do you work with gravity and try to lose it at the same time. It's, a, uh, it's about uh, pushing yourself off the ground and also at the same time, letting yourself being uh, stretched out in, uh, in different directions, in all different directions. That is what happens in, a, which she tries to explain to me, I didn't experience the zero gravity, but this is the next best, best thing that I had. I would like to experience it now, but yeah. Um, I think, uh, I think I said everything. Yeah. <laughs> and are you planning to, are you continuing to work with her or do you have more performances? Um, unfortunately, no, this was the last thing because uh, when, when I started uh, working with her, it was just before COVID. And uh, we had, we normally, we, we planned to work together for a couple of years and the COVID happened and I got stuck in Serbia. So they had to replace me because it was so difficult to travel from Serbia, first with a visa and then with a, without COVID passes and everything was closed, every border. So they found another acrobat uh, that, uh, that was already in France that replaced me. But uh, we, before COVID, even before COVID, we tried to bring this show to Serbia, to Novi Sad, uh, to play and present it in, uh, in the city where now it's a, a capital of, uh, of culture. And um, I, I lost a last uh, train of thought. But you are now part of the world that we can see. Yes, of course. Of course. Of course. Tonight. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for being here on a performing day. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you, Nemanja. Uh, we can continue with uh, Petra. Petra is one of the four Croatian artists that are part of Circus Without Circus project, which is very similar to what you are doing in Siam. Uh, it's a cooperation project run by Circus Centrum from Belgium. And it's all about research and experiments and failing or not failing. 
Uh, the idea is to connect circus artists with any other kind of artists and see what happens in two weeks of uh, creation together. It's completely not focused on the outcome. It's really about the research, everything from the from the first meeting till the they, till they leave. Uh, really not about the final or like work in progress. Really about the, the research moment. Uh, Ivan is also part of the Circus Without Circus as a vision artist. We have Dora from Split as an aerial circus artist, and we have Natko uh, Stepanichev as a video and film animation artist. So you can tell us a bit more about your experience. You are going to have a new residence in two weeks with a mm -hmm. contemporary dance, but you already did one um, residency last year, last summer in Copenhagen with another contemporary contemporary dance, so you can tell us about your experience of working with a dancer uh, starting from your point as a contemporary circus artist. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, in Copenhagen I was working with a contemporary dancer and before the residency we uh, didn't plan anything, we just wanted to come and to see what will happen and what we will do and uh, the association in Copenhagen, they, uh, they're pushing artists to work uh, site-specific. So we were like a little bit exploring the city and where we could uh, perform and like make our own research. So we found uh, a bridge and I was really, um, I wanted to already before to experiment uh, doing um, the shoot, the falling from uh, trapeze in the water, like to use the water as uh, like the mat and some kind of uh, security. And um, he was also interested to work in a bridge as a, as a structure. And yeah, those two weeks were really interesting and intense experience because we like we didn't enter so much like in circus or in dance like except me where I was uh, trying to do polling uh, from the bridge but we just experienced this kind of a work like site specific two weeks uh, in the Copenhagen where the weather is really bad and really unpredictable so it was like two weeks of struggling like on the rain and like trying to do something on bridge but uh, like not, not being able and being cold and like really struggling with like uh, ourselves working yeah, work, ourselves, yeah, <laughs> ourselves uh, and the communication and uh, yeah after two weeks um, finally we we couldn't communicate uh, what we wanted to do for like for the presentation but we had this great and uh, intense experience and uh, yeah finally i uh, presented some of my uh, like your own research yeah my my own research uh, of uh, falling and uh, of experimenting the structure and uh, yeah he was he presented his own uh, research. <laughs> there is like was... a failure moment. Yeah, the failure which moment. Which is okay with yeah, the yeah. project. But you're also working in your own uh, performance that you can see tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in, the, in the combination of contemporary circus with puppetry. Mm -hmm. So you can tell us a little bit more because it's also a multidisciplinary approach. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, um, now when I'm thinking about this, uh, yeah, it's really interesting because uh, uh, when I start to do this, uh, this project, um, like, I didn't know anything about puppetry. I just, like, I had this skeleton, which is like, it, the show it's called My Dad and Me. So I'm playing with a skeleton, a skeleton human size. And I was playing a little bit with him, but uh, I didn't know what to do because I'm not uh, a puppet artist. I don't know anything about puppetry. So at first I had like puppet mentor. So I was experimenting with her and she was teaching me. And uh, after like a couple of months, I decided to don't go in this uh, classical puppet uh, moment of being on the stage. So I wanted to explore how can I 
play with the skeleton and with puppet on my way, like being a circus artist, how can I play with him, like doing acrobatic stuff or like uh, doing acroporte with him, dancing with him, or even being on uh, trapeze, which is my discipline. Uh, like, yeah, I tried to do this kind of stuff. Also, I had like uh, acrobatic mentor. Um, Marina Cherry, she helped me a lot like uh, with uh, her watch and uh, with some ideas. And after I was working with Nikola Mijatovic and finally we create this circus and puppet show, which is completely not classical puppetry and which is like really our own uh, research of uh, putting the puppet on the stage, like puppet being like, uh, sitting somewhere on being hanged somewhere completely dead and which is dead so yeah <laughs> i'm i was really enjoying in the process of uh, creating and experimenting th those things yeah. <laughs> and but let's hope for a better uh, collaboration with the next yeah yeah dancer. with the next combiner dancer we planned everything <laughs> like we know what we wanted to do and we will make research yeah <laughs> yeah so <laughs> Uh, Valentina, you can tell us about your work, your inspirations, how you combine surface, new magic, dance, text. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, me, it's true that uh, I'm not, uh, I, I don't have an identity, a circus identity. Um, it has been a bit chaotic pointing through the formation and school and uh, stuff. And then it has become later a kind of a strength. Until no, still now, we don't know really what it is about. I mean, there is this thing about finding the subtitle for the show. I mean, uh, the title and what is it? No. <laughs> I remember in, uh, in Cirque, now it's important. In Cirque for the Première, we did some flyers where I put Lento, ni cirque ni théâtre, neither circus, neither theater. Uh, a big mistake because uh, <laughs> no, it's true because we're talking about a lot about this transversality and it's uh, great. It's also something contemporary in the fact that it's happening now. So we cannot step back and look at what it is. So there is theory in a kind of a way. And then, like you said, in the experience, uh, the job. And then there is a practice, you know. For example, now I'm giving some uh, parentheses. Um, circus atelier for old people in a maison de retraite. Mm -hmm. uh, for people uh, who are old and cognitive problems. Let's do some uh, circus uh, workshop. Uh, it is really a romantic idea that we are in the circus workshop. We are talking, sharing, uh, and experiencing the balance and the stuff, uh, you know. So um, it is a yeah, kind of a tricky question because we're going towards that, but uh, Paradoxically, it is a great problem because, for example, in circus school, it's a bit. Uh, I remember in Flick, it was like uh, the director, uh, where do I put you? Where do I put you? Because you need the little uh, bubbles. Yeah. You, know, you need the little boxes. And uh, that what there, uh, what could be in a circus school, for example, uh, transversal, maybe the clown. But it is really rare to have a, like a clown discipline, and uh, but in Fratellini there is. It is possible to yeah, do clown. recently. Recent. Actually, it's there is a super interesting interview about uh, Annie Fratellini saying uh, when people uh, tell me I want to start, I want to be a clown. She says no. To start, it's not possible because the clown can imitate all other disciplines. So he's a juggler, he's a cascade, he's an acrobat, he can do horse riding, and you have to have suffered uh, a bit in, uh, in life. You need uh, <laughs> layers of experience to mm -hmm. act to be true. So it's interesting. Um, but uh, yes, it is not identified. And then when you do a show, for example, like mine, which is a uh, uh, I, I still change the subtitle because I don't know the pro, uh, the programmateur, uh, the uh, programmeurs. Yes, 
and I said, yeah, but uh, it's neither this, neither that. And uh, lots of great shows also uh, non-identified to me, a bit uh, died uh, because I think, but also they have to make the, the Rampire Les Salles. They have to show something that are current for his public and, uh, and be clear in the communication. So I understand that, but there is a little, uh, yeah, to, uh, between uh, these two. Um, that, uh, am I going too far? Or no, no, to... it's, it's interesting. For, for me, for example, uh, when I was seeing your show, uh, your performance in Zagreb, like last Friday and in Split two days ago, I was thinking like, how smart it is because it can be presented in so many different mm. places. For me, it's really like, uh, a plus to have a performance of your kind that is so many different things. It can it can work in the circus festival like these tools. It can work in the dance. It can be work in yes. the theater. So I appreciate this kind of work, and I think we are here to appreciate this kind of work. <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, it can be a strength. For example, in Circa, where I was uh, really nervous because during the premiere in a festival of circus, actually it was good because it was a bit of oxygen inside a great uh, programmation of circus. Hmm. Um, though, uh, for example, I've been part of a Circus Next program, which is great that permitted uh, to be the show to be visible and stuff. Also inside there are lots of contradictions because in the end you are, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, analyzed uh, under some criteria, which is normal because it should be like an example for young circus. It's like, mm, I cannot see uh, the proper circus. Uh, maybe, uh, or sometimes they can say, okay, I can see a, a macaco, a handless cartwheel, and now I don't even do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now the, the great, the easiest target is to say, okay, so Maje Nouvelle, this is good. So you <laughs> actually, it isn't even a, a, ma a proper magic show. It uh, is the magical is the writing. Okay, there are some magical effects, but it is about the writing, about the details. In fact, I followed this uh, formation in, in Knack of uh, Maje Nouvelle and also of Dramaturgy, which was uh, passionant was super was great and learning that I was like oh, okay so it's not only about people uh, doing circus or wanting to do magic it is for everyone and why didn't they tell me this before and I want to share it with everyone it's like if there is no study of the background a bit or it's really recent in circus because it's a more recent art there is less memory less uh archive or archive uh now jean-michel he does that a bit in italy and uh, to me it is indispensable it should be obligatory because it's like uh, if i want to become a painter and i don't know who chagall is or uh, look what i invented <laughs> doing a pointillism i don't know so <laughs> no it's true and also, okay, it's not only about that, but it opens, uh, the, like learning what I learned in the Magie Nouvelle uh, Cursus, which is not really, it's not for magic. It's like opening endless perspective and uh, giving you tools you don't have, because as a performer, we always think you have to solve the scene or the show, doing something, you, like voluntarily, you have to do something more. It's always something less, actually better. But you also write with the with the with the writing, with the lights, with the stuff. So it is, uh, yes. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> what else? Uh, yeah, it's as, it's enough. Voilà. It's enough. <laughs> uh, do we have any questions at this moment? If not, I will. Uh, we will continue with Mirna. Mirna asked us if it's okay to present East is Best, which was part of the panel before, <laughs> but it's important to share that there is an existing, uh, at the moment, informal yeah. network that will probably become formal. Well, okay. Um, I will just refer because you were so focused or my focus was so much on MAPAs 20 years ago that we went through quickly through time. 
And when Lauren mentioned Perform Europe, our organization is actually part of two programs under the or the five uh, Perform Europe projects. And uh, one of them is East is Best, that we have a part, a large part uh, coming out of MAPA and people who were like that. Uh, within the region, staying in contact, and you know, we come in, we come out, etc. And we've been collaborating for ten years, very informally. Um, it was a chance to kind of okay, let's get together, and uh, the whole process was quite complex, but we made it, and so it gives us the ability uh, to tour regional works and show the young talents and you know, what is happening and hopefully thanks to this we hope that it will be able to be a bit more formal as a structure and as an obligation of course there are many challenges but i just wanted to say this is kind of after many many years coming again back to full circle i'd like to say something about the institute if I may? Yeah, the, the, yeah. just so to remind you that this panel is about interdisciplinary, yes. but also about the cooperation between independent sector and institution. And exactly that, because <laughs> I started the first, first was the first, just a little very quick uh, introduction. First was the festival. Then uh, I was then also a practicing artist, etc. And the festival started producing some of the works and we started promoting local uh, national artists. And we had this uh, map and then we had a huge, huge project. And then we, this, we realized that uh, because we we're submitting this as uh, project by project, we're all the time in competition with ourselves. And the founder said, we know it would be really good if you kind of have all these initiatives under one. And we were also doing some research and started publishing and dramaturgy workshop and writing workshops and all the blah, blah, blah. So we kind of went like, okay, what? And we realized, well, everything seems like uh, in the world that Nicola was mentioning, we have association for this. Or well, let's call ourselves an institute. Why not? There's a theater institute, there's uh, music, in, there's this, there's that. We are the institute, there was no academy. And uh, all the time we were told, oh, you dancers, what do you know? You're kind of undereducated for what you're doing. And so we said, yes, we will be institute. <laughs> this was a big uh, problem because no one would register us. Then I got <laughs> a lawyer who said, well, you could become a foundation because under an old Yugoslav law, although we were already in Croatia, you could do that. Also, this would be helpful to continue maybe the MAPA when the project of putting MAPA as, uh, with all the equipment in rounds. There was an opening in 94 um, that maybe it could help, right? And then, um, so we created the institute. Um, it didn't really solve a lot uh, because the law changed and then they said that well, it can no longer be a foundation because foundations can only be if you're in health, social service, something or a family organization, you know. Then they said that you should become an art project, like an artistic organization. And I said that we are not really, we're about the art, but we're not an artistic. We have the vision. So I said, okay, can we become like an association? Oh, yes, okay, but not within the Ministry of Culture, it will go to another. So, okay, this um, over time was good and also a lot of uh, negativity in a way as a result. But then uh, we, uh, we, we continue doing all these great things and in 80, uh, 1995, I think, or 94, we um, came, there was this um, idea where the city was offering the multiple profits and independent sector to rent all theaters and try, and so we applied. We will rent this, what is now the Zara Dance it was an old theater totally dilapidated, we could not use it in winter because it was raining, it was too cold, and there was a, a person living in there that we could not throw out. Um, mm. In the summer was too much heat and we could only use a small part because everything else was destabilized. 
but uh, then uh, we came to a brilliant idea because then the city said, well, now each of these that are rented out spaces could become, like part of a strategy, could become uh, dedicated spaces for certain kind of, kind of art. And so I said, fantastic, we already have a program from MAPA about interdisciplinarity, but positioning dance as a core and, and interjecting and interacting and collaborating with lots of different disciplines, but also across sectors, because a lot of our projects also work with schools, social services, um, health, research institutes, and all of that over the time. Um, so we put, submitted that, the program passed, and then there was this, okay, they start, the city decided to rebuild it and become like a center for dance. And we continued to work <coughs> through that. However, when the, sit, when the renovations were over, there was a little matter of how is this now going to work? And then this is what the public, private, we will do it public product. And so it was an interesting exercise uh, because they really couldn't agree what it meant, what we thought we would propose and how it should and how it works around the normal um, circumstances. And because I had already then been familiar with how it works in Europe, how it works in North America and, you know, private, public, it's either 50-50 or it's something, but it's not 100% of one or 100% of the other. So um, there was the decision, you will, we will give you one by one year contract. Um, and if you are doing well, we will do it after three years into the multi year, but you have to take the risk of operating because we have no money. Um, so I said, fine, that's great, we'll do it like that. Um, and uh, then the part, and then I negotiated because the only money we were really getting from the city that was quite large was the festival money. And so we negotiated that I can take 50% of the money from the festival to use it to start programmation of the center and all of that. So, um, which is also a bad, bad proposal in my head because when we were evicted in 2017, uh, they didn't return the 50%, no. Anyway, uh, but uh, what I realized is throughout the time, and I've been around 40 years trying to work with institutions and be the independent, there is an embedded misunderstanding in former socialist countries and therefore Yugoslavia, therefore Croatia as well, about the role of the voluntary independent sector period. It's seen as something that is against the state, that is against it, it's aversive, it's suspicious, it's all these things and nothing. And um, what uh, the other thing is uh, that misunderstanding that uh, private sector is not just someone making profit. Private sector is those that are in the not-for-profit. It's two different roles, right? Um, but here, somehow it's understood you must be making profit if you're in the private sector. No. Then if you're working with volunteers, because the way we manage to operate in the center, we had three people employed and we were working with a lot of uh, volunteers. Many of them, it was the starting ground for new careers. Uh, and um, it functioned, right? So that was, how can this be? We were producing good quality and we had audiences, but uh, compared to say the institution, we made them look bad, I think, because you were doing equal amounts of programs for zero, zero <laughs> almost. Uh, Almost. So anyway, um, the other part, which is uh, when we approach as the independent sector, like the festival institutions, um, and many of them are today run by people who come from the independent sector. They don't like it's they become these new personas. It's like, who are these people now? We were colleagues yesterday. Now we are like enemies <laughs> or frenemies, right? Um, and there are all these conditions that uh, they are imposed to fulfill 
because they now represent the system. Instead of being able to come from this so-called independent or more relaxed, they come, they're not, they become unfortunately also gatekeepers. So it's sad in many respects. Um, but, you know, for example, going back to Mapas that we, uh, we had the um, Philips company, the bulk company, when we got these uh, trucks and the reflectors, they came, they heard in the launch, uh, someone was there, an employee of Philips, for example, in Amsterdam, and the next day we got a, a call from Philips to say, we will donate four years of bulbs to your reflectors. <laughs> You know, like people show initiative, people value other people's initiatives. Here, I find there is a lot of obstacles coming and stemming out of a misunderstanding of what is the role and the different roles the independent sector has or doesn't. Another thing which is of concern to me, but I understand it, is that in the independent sector, because it sees how the state-run theaters and institutions are well taken care of, now wants to be institutionalized, which is uh, contrary to the being of being an independent Independence artist and being in the independent, you want your independence, right? So right now I see this um, uh, antagonism somewhat continuing, coming out of the fact that there is a lack of understanding how it could be worked together, and how the ecology of the performing arts, not just here in Croatia, but across Europe, is all of these differences and all of uh, the possibilities and how new possibilities come out of that collaboration. And then uh, going back to your donor and Masena question, uh, it is uh, really important uh, for uh, former Yugoslavia, the region and Croatia is for things to change, uh, they will start changing once the taxation system changes, because right now there is no motivation. A small country like Croatia, when the ministry tells us or the city, well, go and find sponsors. Who, when Croatia as a small country has no industry, it's all sold. Why will a foreign company that already has bought up 80% of Croatia they have no interest in promoting themselves. They already own us. So, you know, in that sense, we are subversive, right? Uh, but they have no also financial motivation really to pay. Citizens who would like to have no motivation because they're struggling financially, but they won't even get the tax benefit. So the taxation system I struggle to change across sectors. Um, uh, we have uh, tomorrow and the day after, in the evening, a short uh, meeting with uh, art, or, uh, art, uh, art education institutions, the Dance Academy, the Theatre Academy, and the Conservatory of Contemporary Dance, a small uh, round table at six o'clock around uh, sustainable artistic careers, because we are investing into artists, artists who will not be able to work anywhere because there's no position, there's no money. So, but at the same time, they're not educating them how they can sustain their livelihood. And I mean, here in this room are people who are existing from these careers, but at the academies and in the schools, they do not teach them that. So we're trying to say it's possible but it's not possible if every one of those graduating students thinks they will be employed at the National Ballet or the uh, ZKM or whatever other theater. It's impossible, right? So how, all, all in Zagreb or all in somewhere, because everyone is chasing the money. And in partnerships and in looking at the gaps that are appearing, I think there is a, a deep beautiful opportunity for each of the initiatives that are here and that are existing and that will be born. So I'm a true believer that despite everything, yes, institutions and independent sectors can work and should, and they will, if each one accepts we are different and because of those differences, we are richer. Mm -hmm. a, a nice conclusion. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we are a little bit over the time, so yeah, I will ask again if there is any questions. 
No. So I can just can I just of course like, yeah. um, because I, I think both were interesting is uh, the I think the basis of those projects is is mutual curiosity mm -hmm. and. Um, what you were saying about the the uh, uh, magic formation that you you come and uh, you are not expecting anything special, just like open minded, get what you what you're given and not looking for an objective. I think that's the basis for those um, transdisciplinary and cross sectoral uh, project is. Um, uh, is, is curiosity. We are lacking of curiosity, even the, the cultural sector. Because when we when we address, for example, the private sector, we are more like we are looking for, for sponsors. So we are looking for clients, but we have nothing to sell them. And even if we are looking for clients, we are not even interested in what they are doing. And that's the, the basic problem in collaboration when you're transsectorial and you're not even uh, given the time and curiosity to listen to uh, your potential future partner, to look at what he's doing in his life, to uh, be um, to investigate what's his uh, daily life. And um, and uh, uh, the, the the thing you said with Philips that it comes up by chance. It was the same for us with Capgemini. Mean, is we need never to never forget that the audience has another life. Uh, I mean, most of the audience is an employee of a private company in the rest of her life, and so um, the, the private sector is also a huge uh, uh, reservoir, or, uh, a pool of pool of audience. So so so. It, I think the, 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 the main for us, the, the, uh, the, the, the main issue and, and the, the main teaching of that of that uh, of those projects is to 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 go to, to to go outside our comfort zone and not always pull the other ones in our comfort zone. Yeah. So it's like let's be curious and engage ourselves and take some risks to go in places that we feel are weird or dangerous or uh, politically totally different. But let's uh, explore those places because there are so many interesting people. And uh, so I, I think that's the beginning for yeah. transsectoral projects. And you never know what comes up. And sometimes <laughs> it's just a you discover that it's it's a lot of tools and uh when you when you get them you don't really know what you're going to do with this but you, you still have them and sometimes maybe years later you're going to use it uh, in a way you didn't even imagine when you meet them that was weird. <laughs> yeah. i would just like to say one thing for uh, because i saw your show for the second time now and, uh, <laughs> The, the because you don't say it's a magic show uh the magic that happens in the show it gives it more value because it's so small and uh, you're not saying it's a magic show and you don't expect it it just gives it a lot more richness and i think that's the same for circus and dance like when you don't say it's a circus show but there is something a circus show and there is something from circus happening on the stage you're just surprised and it gives it more value and that's what what you're doing, and I I really appreciate that. Yes, we study this the storytelling in um, uh, inside of, no outside of the show. I mean, uh, uh, for example, what you write down in the in the paper is a dramaturg dramaturgic gesture. And in magie, for example, we study the fact that most of the time it is uh, clever not to tell that it is about magic because it takes a uh, and uh, yes, we know if the author is the performer, so we look at the uh, the perception is different. Oh, she wrote that for herself, or ah, uh, oh, she it's communicated as a solo also. It's a solo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a solo. And uh, yes, of course, it takes value, and uh, <coughs> yes, yes, we call it the storytelling around the the, the, the whole atmosphere around. Yes, and uh, you as a company and mm. artist. <laughs> Tania, 
Your I want just to explore a little bit on this uh, how you name your work. Like a subtitle, is it a magic show? Is it a circus show? Is it a dance show? Uh, I agree with you, Nemanja. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that it is actually so nice not to tell and let the people just experience and be really surprised with, with what you bring. And of course, this this uh, as you said, advantage that uh, that you can perform in many different festivals. So if you perform in a dance festival, they get surprised at the circus and magic. And if you perform at the circus festival, they are surprised at the amount of dance you have inside and how is it connected. But um, what I am struggling with right now because I see myself as an emerging artist, as someone who is uh, just. Uh, started uh, on, on the road is in this moment uh, of how you present your your work to to the donors or uh, financial supports uh, that uh, how you have this struggle where to place yourself i feel sometimes that i have to find this box and to put myself inside this just so i can start working Mm -hmm. And I can bring this up, and then later I can just say, "Okay, it is my work. <laughs> it's not doesn't matter what is the subject." So I was actually wondering, uh, did you have also the same? I, I think the struggle is there always, if I may say so. Mm -hmm. But I think the solution is in the artist agreeing to uh, speak different languages depending on who they speak to. Because a lot of times we talk to each other and we come up with these statements and terminology only we understand. Mm -hmm. And then someone from the next, sitting next to what are they talking? Foreign language, right? The curiosity, definitely understanding who am I going to ask and what is their interest, doing your research. It's the same like you want to tour. If you're a small project and you are approaching a festival that only presents, I don't know, mega spectacles with 100 people on stage, how do you, A, the question would be to me, my, for myself, would be, do I belong there? Mm -hmm. What do I see related in my work to what they are showing to start to engage in a conversation? Did you ever think of maybe opening an avenue for a smaller project? Let me tell you about mine, and I think it because the idea behind my project is very similar to you know uh -huh. uh, doing your research who is it you're talking to and it functions uh, for and then you engage with partnerships if someone says no it's maybe no now mm -hmm. but you don't break the relationship because they said no because maybe a year from now or five years from now their circumstances change or your change and then you can say, hey, you know, you remember we had that discussion and look, since then, this is... but you can't just leave five years and then knock on their door. You have to maintain that relationship over that period of time. So artists need to engage. The other thing, we as artists are also citizens, but the citizens, the art is theirs. It's not ours. It's theirs. So we are in the same boat and can we then agree to go together? And I think there is no, you know, lesser value of work doing in the arts. And I love that so many of my dear colleagues here are also cleaners. I clean as well. Wash the dishes, take out the garbage, you know. Uh, I don't mind that. That is part of, because that is a great place and I care about it. So if someone didn't get to it, I'll do it. Right. So it, it's all about building that ecology within ourselves but also around us. So, yeah, it's, uh, and then when you work, like when I ask for proposals, descriptions of artists, I get grant proposals. I'm not a granting agency. I don't care about why you think your project is of value to the culture of Croatia. I'm interested why you think the project sh should be on the festival. And people copy paste because it's easier. <laughs> I so, think, yeah, it's just the lack of yeah. time and the yeah, humor and the resources. No, of course. To, like, I mean, I'm that, I'm that person as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's easy to say to the other, hey, you know, because it's a reminder to myself. It's about research and relationships and learning different languages. 
Uh, about what you said, and just another perspective. Uh, in Romania, there is not a lot of surface, but there are some isolated projects, and there is the traditional our surface school. And, uh, and very often, people are asking us not to sell them circus. Just call it acrobatics, call it juggling, call it somehow else. No, but it's not a juggling show. You know, it's not an acrobatic show, it's not a phenomenalist show, it's circus. And somehow my position is I want to defend this. And in Romania, politicians are doing this. Like this. <laughs> this is the idea. <laughs> this is the first degree of, of using this term. You know how much work is for a circus artist? Politicians, they don't know this kind of work. They never work as much as a circus artist. And for me, it's, it's somehow sometimes an objective. We sell circus. This is it. And of course, in the circus school, there are theater places and uh, movement places and music places. And in the show, there is maybe uh, live music, but it's not a concert. This is circus. And about the box, I want this box because this box uh, is exactly what it is circus. This is it. You shake it until you get your balance, uh, freezing uh, I don't know, the energy, and this is circus. And then, yeah, you can do, I don't know, call them one ball, like Alex, you know, Pierre Mayen was your yeah. role, or what Pierre Mayen remember that did in Novi Sad, or uh, Pierre Mayen was with us. Yeah, he told me, he, he told me. We, we did one, one shot, we went in a, a completely destroyed neighborhood mm -hmm. social, and we did the show there, and it was circus. Of course, a part was vertical dance, and another part was acrobatics, and another part was, was not phenomenal. I want to say circus because it's important for people to understand the work and the result behind this. And uh, I would prefer politicians to work more if we want to do circus. I mean, just uh, eight hours of high school by day, you will understand what is the work behind. Not just, you know, speaking back to each other and this is it, you know. Sometimes I, I want to defend this term because it, in our country, it, we start now, I mean, we are in the 70s, let's put it like this. And it's important what we will get in the 90s and what we will get, you know, with the time we come. So, so just another perspective about what you said. Yes, thank you. We just one thing, we could send a big economic question as well, because uh, if we invite a company, which would say that the circus and the public comes and they can see the circus yeah. in there. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, if you look back the the cost, so uh, for us, so for example, in this region, it's a big experiment, investment. And sometimes, you know, the ticket income can very low because then the people would say that it's not service something else. So we have lots of problems now because, for example, in the next season, we don't have classical circus species now. We have for example, one piece we would like to advertise was that the uh, teachers who teach physics, because it's physical, physical experiments on stage, you know, so when, so it's very difficult. And in some cases we have problem because there was nudity, though we wrote that over 16, but young kids is taken because the people, they, they look at the program superficially. So, so there are many, many questions anyway, not only that, okay, we have to be very open, we have to talk, uh, uh, we have to sense the public. It's, uh, it's all the time, uh, I would say that it's a balance, balance of many, many, many things. But very it's the same with contemporary dance, if you Yeah, but that. contemporary dance, what we, I just learned this in the, <laughs> a couple of months ago, I realized that we introduced, you and me, we introduced, because who paid the price? France and German, Germany and England and everybody. Yeah. Because that, that was, let's say, political, real. political, cultural, I wouldn't say the invasion. It's not good to say that. It was but that real. was it. it was because everybody felt that something would happen behind the Iron Curtain. Yeah. And that was the investment. So we really, we were in that fantastic yeah. situation. We had to select and it was paid, the check was paid by foreign countries. And now we are in the situation, there's a big transition that generation who 
enjoyed this 90s, 80s, 90s because of this, because it was paid by somebody else. Now we have to, we are in a different case. We are in a different case because we have to pay. We have some money, we got some money from our states because we want it. And when we have to face a problem now, how to educate other people because year by year we have less and less income because the people are much more uh, different than, than the situation. Sorry. And without a kind of policy, it's in really the so yeah. yeah, and this is why we need more partners, many, many partnerships, yeah, because partners. you see in the past that way, you you that way, I see that way, and we need more and more partners because then we can do, let's say, okay, we are a little bit coming with our because, strategy and policies. Yeah, I, I, in talking about audiences, for example, um, the law here changed some maybe um, seven, eight years ago. And unless you are a registered artist, artistic organization with, registered with the Ministry of Culture, you can no longer sell tickets to schools. Really? And I'm we surprised. built audiences. You know, we had little ambassadors with their chairs and choirs at universities and secondary schools. We had our network of teachers where we could go and talk to the students about this work and that and uh, talk to the school to bring in. So generations of audiences that we still have and they bring their grandchildren now to the festival mm -hmm. came from the development that way. Um, and because we are an association, we are not, we cannot go. And so we have maybe a, a connection to one teacher or another, but when they retire or gone, then we have to start all over again. That's one. The other, the art education in schools is eroded. And that's another. There is no, there is no media that writes about us. We have many problems. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like but then, more penalties are not yeah. going to be enough. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's why it's important the relationships and the connectivity mm -hmm. and the partnership and the resilience of the resilience. sector and, and, and the arts. supporting each yeah. other and all.